Hey all, Payne Marine here with uh, another status report. Uh, what's been going on? As you can see, not my normal backdrop behind me. I'm in a, another hotel. Work's got me on the road again. Um, so this time I'm coming to you from Florida. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you can hear me okay in this video. At least in in this room where I'm at, the uh, the air conditioner unit is quite loud. Um, and while it does a good job of keeping the room cold, it has done nothing to eliminate the humidity level from this room. Um, so that's been kind of a, I don't know, a little uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, so this will be kind of a quick uh, update, uh, review. Uh, just regular work life has been very busy this past month. Um, so wasn't able to get a whole lot uh accomplished hobby wise I guess you could say um, I guess the biggest events or uh, yeah events that have happened was uh, the I would say my local uh, games workshop which is about two and a half to three depending on traffic hours away uh, had their birthday celebration so I uh, was able to um, Kind of participate in that a little while, a little bit and get the uh, the event the uh, event specific um, kind of items, uh, which I did a uh, unboxing uh, out of the box kind of product review of those. So definitely take a look at that if you're interested. Um, but yeah, other than that, like uh, made some very minor progress um, painting wise. Um, mostly my, I, I also did a video of, out of the box of my, um, decals that I got, my custom decals I got from Fallout Hobbies. Um, so that was kind of most of my hobby progress was I put all those, those decals, those transfers on my models. So all my painted models now from my Star Commanders have their, uh, their decals on, which is awesome. Um, it just adds a whole nother level to them. Um, and now I can say that, like they're actually complete now. There was always just like not having the the symbols on them and like the squad markings and stuff. There was just kind of something missing. But now uh, all my painted things anyway are completely finally finished with those. i have still got a long ways to go. I still like I said I have like 70 I think models of stuff to do. Something like that crazy for the um, Star Commanders. It's just such a time consuming uh, paint scheme. Uh, hopefully I can just keep chipping away at it and get caught up before they start releasing any more new primaries anytime soon. Um, as much as I want new primary stuff to come out, I'm enjoying kind of the break so I can get caught up because um, for a while there I was kind of able to keep pace and then like, you know, things just kept coming and coming and you just fall behind. You can't ever keep pace. Um, not to mention all the things that are sitting on the back shelf right now. Like, all the terrain and stuff and now they're coming out with like some Eldar terrain I'm like oh you know I mean so we're gonna have we have a little bit of Tau terrain we'll be getting some Eldar terrain which is great I love uh, definitely sets the theme on the tabletop to have a lot more official um, terrain but yeah again like I'm already behind just in that aspect and then all this new terrain coming out plus other projects and models and stuff so um, but my primary focus is the Star Commanders right now. I really need to get um, get on those, get them up and going uh, as prepared for Nova. Uh, as far as Nova goes, um, I'm still I'm struggling right now to come up with what my list is because that really is going to help me to uh, prioritize what needs to get done and painted. Uh, is depending on what my list builds look like. So I need a thousand point list, a 1250, and a 1500 point list, and then there's like the recon that are 200 points, which isn't really much of anything. I mean that's easy, easy day. Um, I think I kind of have a thousand point list in mind. Now I believe the thousand, I think the 2000 points and maybe the 1250. I'm not sure the 1250. I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, I I know for a fact that the thousand point games um, are on four by fours. And let me, let me rephrase that. The first one I know for sure is. The second one might not be because you're paired up with a random partner. So essentially you're playing a 2,000 point game versus two other uh, people. So 
Uh, that one might be not on a 4x4. It would be kind of shocking if it is. Um, but if it is, I mean, you'll definitely get into the action pretty quickly. So um, we'll see. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I The 1,000-point list is very infantry-heavy uh, with no mecha uh, mechanization at all. Like, no repulsors, uh, no dreadnought. And I... The repulsor is kind of a bit expensive to bring at a thousand points, um, while it has good wounds, a decent save with a three plus, and it just has all kinds of fire firepower. I mean, it's uh, so many points that um, if it gets taken out, which anybody that's smart is going to focus fire on your one repulsor and really cripple your list. Then, so I figured, well, I'll bring more bodies and use that plus I'm playing Raven Guard so at the very least outside of 12 inches you know while I'm you know moving forward I'll have a little bit of a little bit more survivability as I'll have that minus one to hit so I was kind of hoping on that plus using the stratagem uh, again hopefully you know first turn goes my way if not then I'll have to use the stratagem to play some things kind of in cover or something um, but yeah, kind of hopefully kind of using that. So um, I had to pull up the list real quick. Um, but yeah, so basically it was a uh, battalion. Is that right? The battalion detachment. Um, let's see if I can get it to pull up. Uh, so as of right now, I think I'm going to be uh, the captain uh, with the Relic Burning Blade. And oh, it wants me to update. I saw I built it on Battle Scribe, so of course it wants me to do this update now. So this actually might take a second. Sorry, I'm not gonna. I'll just try to wing it from what I can remember. Um, so I know that. So I had the, the captain. It was an auto bolt rifle. Um, normally I like to take the stalker for that, but it went with the uh, auto because uh, just points because it actually got me to that um, like exactly a thousand points. Um, I also took, so that I got my, uh, and then I had a librarian. Uh, I haven't been taking the librarian a whole lot, but I figured, uh, the chance to get some smite off and get some mortal wounds, or the chance to maybe, uh, deny something every now and again would be nice, which I don't normally do. So I thought I'll bring a librarian versus trying to bring, like, a lieutenant or something. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence about that, because I definitely like to reroll wounds. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, then three five-man squads of intercessors, um, and it looks like it actually opened up, so let's see here if this is it. Um, yeah, it looks like it. So yeah, so then, uh, oh wait, no, this is not. Oh, here we go. Nova Thousand. Alright, so... Alright, so yeah. So, Primaris Captain, uh, Mastercrafted Auto Bolt Rifle, and the Burning Blade Relic. Primaris Librarian, pretty standard. Troops, uh, three squads of Intercessors, Elites. So, bringing Intercessors, or not, I'm sorry, Intercessors, uh, Aggressors, I don't know why. Um, just a three-man squad of Aggressors with the um, Auto Bolt Storm. Uh, gauntlets. So actually, it's I'm sorry, it's four. So it's uh, three aggressors and then the aggressor sergeant. So it's four aggressors all together. Um, and then this is one that I, I'm not too sure about right now uh, is the Imperial Space Marine. Now, I had, uh, if you've seen my album, I converted one of my Imperial Space Marines into like a Primaris Imperial Space Marine just so it fits the theme of the army. A little bit better um, now I like it because uh, I like the idea of him uh, I don't know how I played like when the, when the, the new edition first came out I, I played him a few times and it was whew, man by himself on his own it was really like hit or miss like if he did if he didn't hit if he didn't connect I mean he was dead next turn um, but I was kind of using that strategy. I was trying to use him as kind of like an assassin. 
uh, basically use the stratagem, drop them in, shoot something, and hope for, you know, because his, I mean, if anyone's not familiar, he, I mean, his stats on his, his uh, disintegration gun is pretty decent. So it's an 18 inch rapid fire, strength five minus three, and D6 damage. Um, which to me is kind of like, I mean, he'd be great for like a character killer. So you can drop him in um, kind of close to a character. So that way that character is, is the closest, you know. Um, you know, and then you're getting, you're within the, with that stratagem and you can still move. Granted, if you get first turn, um, if you don't get first turn, you probably wouldn't drop them out and then open to get shot up. But uh, yeah, so you're gonna be able to get within rapid fire range. They'll have two shots at strength five with a minus three. Um, so, I mean, depending upon the character, you might be looking at them still getting a pretty good invol save. Um, but if if not, then you're doing D6 damage, which on a one or two um, command point rerolling that. Um, because the chances of getting better is definitely there. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he, he's decent in points, 60 points for the model. And, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm kind of wary about it. Like, I, I'm not actually not, at this time, I'm not planning on using the stratagem and dropping him in. I'm just going to have him following up some intercessors up the, up the board uh, so he can get in range because... I mean, he's a character, so he can't be targeted anyway, unless he's the closest, because um, he has that character keyword. So, I mean, I'm going to kind of hopefully rely on that to help him survive. Um, and then finally, heavy support, uh, a full 10-man Hellblaster squad with just the regular Plasma Incinerator, um, kind of following my general strategy of putting them in the strike from the shadows and dropping them and deleting whatever the nastiest thing is off the board first and then going from there. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I was kind of debating whether I want to split them up into two five-man groups uh, just so that way, like, while, of course, you can split fire anything now, I can split my shots up, but it, it could potentially have them, have my opponent have to focus on two different targets versus just focusing on one huge 10-man blob. But uh, then the survivability, I don't know. I, I, I'm, at this point, I'm just going to keep them as a 10-man. So that's kind of my idea right now. Um, like I said, not a ton of mobility because there's no transport, but it is a 4x4, four four, so I feel, I feel like... I don't want to sink the points into a repulsor because, like I said, aside from the Imperial Space Marine, uh, pretty keep pretty much keeping it pretty Primaris only as much as I can uh, as a theme, and so um, yeah, pushing pushing up uh, just foot slog in the whole way. I I think will work out because again, twelve inches minus one to hit. You know, if need be, bound into cover to get that plus to the armor. And then, uh, yeah, just utilizing that. Plus, a pretty good range on all the weapons, you know. So, I don't know. I think it I think would be decent. At the very least, right now, the plan is, um, I think, dropping the aggressors and the hell blasters into, um, oh, what's the word? Strike from the shadows, go. <laughs> I could not come up with it for some reason. And then just doing a quick, so my Hell Blasters are 16 power level because now there's that new beta rule which will be in effect for tournament play. So definitely at Nova is um, at least half your power level has to be on the board. Um, it's not no longer half your army, it's going off of like the power level points um, have to be on there. So um, the aggressors and the Hell Blasters come out to 31 power level, and then, um, well, actually, let me rephrase that. It's, I forgot to take out the power level for the uh, Imperial Space Marine. So it's actually, uh, let's see here, 16 and 
12. Okay, so it's 28 power level for the uh, aggressors and the heavy, or the uh, power blasters. And then, let's see, we have uh, 13 for my HQ power levels. And then 15. So we're already, so we're at 28s. And then with the uh, Imperial Space Marine in there as well, puts it at 31. Um, so just, just barely enough to be kind of, well, if I didn't have the Imperial Space Marine, I'd be exactly half. Um, but that puts it just over as well, so there's no question there. So you can definitely aggressors and hell blasters into strike from the shadows so that way because the aggressors the great thing about them is uh, the toughness five and if I get first turn they're they're gonna be going after this probably the second uh, toughest target um, because of those power fists they're, they're gonna smash some armor um, and they've got the bolt storm and grenades so they can either try to take a few hole points or whatever wounds off or whatever they're gonna go smash into, or um, shoot at like a big blob of things before they charge the other thing and try to smash it with their fists. And then hell blasters will, you know, chew up whatever else they have to. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of the the points uh, or the point the, um, the strategy I guess right now. So I'm gonna have those two that are gonna kind of hopefully get up in their face and if I get second turn then they're gonna drop into cover somewhere and utilize that kind of neuter the aggressors because they are slow moving um, and they don't have great range so if I can't get into cover that's within 18 inches uh, I'm not gonna have the best range but if I do then I'm gonna get a plus to their armor so I'm gonna have a two up armor save five, uh, five toughness and because it happens at the beginning of the turn they don't count as moving if I don't move them so that I can share everything twice, which is just would work out great. So yeah, so I just kind of low down on that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much really it. Like the only other thing, like I did bring um, my converted intercessor recon squad that I've been uh, working on. I was able to bring them and some paint so I could hopefully get those knocked out while I'm here. Um, I don't know. It's been pretty busy down here for me so I may not have as much time as I'd like but ideally I'd like to get that full um, squad all done so then I'll just have to go back uh, when I get back home uh, put the transfers on those and they're good um, but yeah so then everything on that list that I was uh, just went over is painted and ready to go so there's that added bonus but now it's trying to figure out what I want to do for 12, 15, and 15 I'm still toying with the idea of the 1500 points bring in that Astraea is super heavy, uh, just because, like, I don't feel like I'll ever get to play it otherwise. Uh, it's, and my role, and my kind of just test rolls off with it, it's just that the damage output, I just don't, just don't see it. Like, there's been discussions everywhere, like, a Lehman Russ is, like, 190-something points and puts out just as much, if not out damage, out rolls, the Astraeus, which is just unfortunate. I, I mean, I guess you could say the Astraeus probably has a better survivability rate than, than a Lehman Russ. So maybe it equals out in the end. Um, I don't have, like, algorithms and I don't, you know, math hammer that much. Um, so maybe maybe that's where it makes it up is its survivability. So it stays on the board longer, so it puts out more output. But really, I mean, you're staying on the board maybe a turn or two better without getting degraded so you're firepower is a little bit more effective uh, for a, another turn or two but uh, hey, I don't know but it's a cool model and stuff so um, but I've kind of I actually kind of halted working on that so I could focus on getting all my infantry stuff done that I know I'll be taking and using at Nova um, so aside from the top turret is about the only thing that's really finished because um, I still have to shade pretty much the main body do all the recess shading and then the highlights and then of course transfers as well um so yeah kind of on hold for that right now um and i have no idea what i'm going to do for 1250 um i have to look at the points i might again if it stays on a 4x4 for the 1250 at most i might just add a redemptor just because it also gets the uh the minus one hit 
for the chapter tactics, so um, I could see the benefit of bringing the Redemptor then as well. Um, and plus being on a 4 by 4 it would be able to get in range pretty quickly. So that might be what I do there, I'm not really sure. I, again, I have to look at the points um, and see if I would have this, the room to add in a Redemptor. I feel like I don't, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of it for now. Um, kind of going forward, things to come up. I'm still, uh, still working on getting some more books and uh, stories read for uh, the bookshelf um, series that I've got. Um, I've actually brought a couple with me, like the short story ones. There's the White Dwarf, um, the one that came free with the White Dwarf. It should be kind of a, I mean, a quick read. And then the Black Library Celebration stories as well. And um, I'm actually about halfway through um, The Heartwood by Robbie McNiven, an Age of Sigmar uh, short story about uh, the Sylvaneth. Really my first Age of Sigmar story. And uh, I, like I said, there's no... Uh, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, question, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm definitely a fan of Robbie McNiven's uh, writing style, um, so I thought, you know, diving into uh, the Age of Sigmar stories of things, I'll start off with a short story and written by him, so I, I went with that. Um, so I'm about halfway through that right now, uh, just like I said, it's just been kind of busy. And then I um, also have the Shattered Crucible uh, on the Fire Slayers up to read, just because... Um, I like dwarves, uh, definitely uh, the Overlord's fan. I've got a whole bunch of those models that they get put together, but uh, I do have the Fire Slayers for um, uh, Shadespire, which I still haven't even <laughs> assembled either or played. But uh, so because of that, they kind of motivated me to get one of their stories and learn a little bit more on those guys. So uh, yeah, so looking forward to getting some reading done when I can and getting those videos made. Um, Hobby-wise, definitely still looking for suggestions if you have any questions on how to uh, achieve something or just, you know, whether I know how to do it or not, I'll try to figure out a way and make a video for you. Uh, uh, as of right now, like, I have a couple, a whole lot of new ideas, so I'm definitely looking for asking for um, any suggestions on uh, what you might want to see because I haven't done any real... Uh, workbench videos in a while um, to kind of showcase some things. Um, yeah, I've kind of I actually have one workbench video that I did years ago that's just been kind of sitting there and I need to get uh, edited and put up. And it's a real simple one of just uh, kind of how to manipulate some Forge World resin when you get it. Um, and the technique I like um, particularly is the boiling hot water. Uh, bend it to place and then like you have cold water like usually running is preferred uh, and then you can like kind of run it underneath there so it keeps its shape um, and that was using when they came out with the new um, heavy weapons from Forge World they had like the some like I don't know they had multi meltas they were like I don't know Mark IV or something it was right about the time uh, Betrayal at Kalth came out uh, they started they did a whole revamp on their weapons um, that uh, included the hands because before they didn't include the hands on the mold um, and so anyway I bought some multi melted that they kind of like carry under slung and the tubing for that comes straight it doesn't come curved at all it comes in a straight tube um, which is a little bit frustrating but um, yeah so I had to boil it so I, I use that video to show how kind of like how to, how to do that because um, something like that, a blow dryer or a hot gun, it d isn't as effective um, because you can't really hold or you can get like maybe some tweeter but it's hard to hold that piece while you're heating it up. So I found that boiling water, um, taking like a spoon or something and scooping it out and then quickly, you know, ideally you could try to like put your, your finger, like your fingertips under cold water um, so that way when you pull the piece out like you don't kind of like the piece will be hot. Um, but the problem with that is with your fingers being that cold you could potentially start the hardening process prematurely 
So you kind of have to grin and bear a little bit. It's not going to be scorching hot. Like, obviously, you don't want to, like, cause third-degree burns because you're just trying to bend a piece. But um, pretty much bend a piece and, and kind of have the model there so you can kind of line up. Okay, here's the import port here. Here's the other port here. And then quick have the cold water running so you can kind of, like, keep the shape and run it right there so that way, you know, when you run in the cold water, it hardens faster and you're, and you're good. I'm saying so. I'll probably uh, have to get that video dug out and, and edit it and put up at the very least. Um, but yeah, any suggestions for anything you want to see, but um, definitely drop it in the comments or either on Facebook or on, on the YouTube channel, and uh, I'll see what I can do. But yeah, so, all right, well, hopefully you, uh, I don't know, got something out of this, got some kind of information, just kind of a heads up on what's coming up, and uh, Hopefully you continue to enjoy seeing where things go, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll just see. Real you. quick, something I completely forgot about. I can't believe I forgot about this. I don't know why I was gonna mention it, and then it just I don't know, just slipped my mind in the moment. Um. Uh, so, you may have may have seen my post um, for uh, Brand, who was the uh, the twelve year old in the UK who was diagnosed with cancer. He was fighting it and. Things seemed to be going pretty well, and then it came back with a vengeance, and unfortunately, he lost the fight, um, and and passed. Um, and the community really came together in just a great way in supporting his family and everything. And uh, everyone started kind of just trying to do what they could um, for that. And unfortunately, the model that I had done for him, I had sent, and it, I don't know, got caught up in customs, and then ended up getting sent back. Um, because I guess there was like a custom or a customs fee or something. And, uh, so I was trying to get it reset to where like the customs went, like I could pay it on my end or something, or, or just so that the family wouldn't have to deal with that. Cause I guess that was happening a lot. Like people were sending all kinds of stuff and then just the amount of money that they have to spend in custom fees to get these items was just getting to be, uh, just too much. Um, and there was somebody else there that was kind of taking on, kind of covering that expense for the family and stuff. But regardless, it had gotten sent back, and uh, unfortunately, um, he did not make it, and I, uh, the model didn't, definitely didn't make it there for him to to be able to enjoy it in time. Um, so uh, because of that, I had ended up putting it up for auction to donate the, the uh, proceeds to charity. Um Specifically here in the States for uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital that does research for uh, children's cancer and stuff like that. Um, and I know his family had set up a GoFundMe uh, to donate to the family. And then they also had um, the mom had a particular, uh, there's a particular um, charity in the UK that dealt with children's cancer research as well. Um, but there was some weird, like, I guess because I'm in the States or whatever, it wouldn't let me. So I just, I went with St. Jude's because the, it's the most notable, uh, I guess not notable, not necessarily the most notable, but the most recognizable one that I know of here in the States. Um, so anyway, uh, put it up for auction, kind of put the word out that, hey, you know, this was the model originally for Brand and his great company. But unfortunately, he passed before he was able to uh, to receive and enjoy the model. Um, so I put it up for auction with all the proceeds uh, to be donated to charity, and it was a I think a great success. The fact that um, any money at all was I guess just the generosity of people in general. Um, so um, I had it pinned at the top. It'll probably be kind of farther down now because, uh, my status update will be the new pinned post. Um, but in the comments you can see, like, you know, I donated, but it, it doesn't show the amount, but so basically what happened, so I, it sold for $71 was the winning bid, um, to a gentleman in, in Texas. Um, I've sent the model. I haven't heard back yet from the gentleman yet. Uh, I'd ask, if I can use his name potentially just, you know, as a thank you and just to kind of publicly say thank you to him for, for basically, uh, donating, uh, you know, the proceeds or for donating, for bidding on the auction, which then was used to donate to the children's research, um, cancer, um, cancer research. 
so I guess it's seventy one dollars for the model uh, was donated uh, to St. Jude's, uh, which like I said, it just um, I just, yeah I don't know I'm trying to I'm kind of choking up a little bit. As people know, I have three children of my own, and um, it's just, just I can't even imagine his family right now. Um, but yeah, so, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a little choked up right now, but yeah, um, they, uh, again, I just can't, I just thank you for anyone that did bid, um, and again, to the gentleman in Texas who won, thank you for, for your bid, and hopefully you enjoy the model, and, uh, I was definitely, uh, converted and painted with great care, and, um, hopes that you enjoy it and hopefully you enjoy it and just recognize you your part um in the fight and uh as part of it I th i'm thinking uh probably because it was successful and um like granted we're not raising hundreds or thousands and maybe one day that'd be great but i think uh, i might do an annual charity auction from now on like do some kind of a unique model and put it up for auction and then donate those proceeds just as kind of a, a a memory um, for brand and also um, just because we have such a great community that really came together for that that, that young man and um, there there's a video of the funeral that they uh, had posted up and it's available for a short time um, you know it's not gonna be up forever but um, a lot of people showed up for the funeral from the community over there in the UK dressed up cosplay and all different types of armor and, and just cost costumes at all 40k related it was just again like i said it's, um for everything considered like we all you know you always the, the game the community the people sometimes can be pretty abrasive or whatever but um at times like this it was great to see the community just kind of put together like you know at the end of the day it's a game and it's a game that we all enjoy and love um, and, a, and a hobby that we enjoy and to be able to come together and support um, each other when it when it really matters is, is pretty cool it's, it's, it, and, and to see that it spanned across all cultures, countries of all kinds and people just came together for this one common goal to try to brighten this kid's day as much as possible um, and of course everyone's hope was that um, he would continue to enjoy um, at least here and now uh, playing for years to come but at the very least he um, definitely got to enjoy his time uh, and thanks in no small parts of the community um, and to any of those that haven't been following he's actually um, Black Library did say that he will be a Space Wolves character named, uh, was it, I think it's Brand uh, Saber Wolf, I believe, will be in a upcoming uh, novel. Um, so that's really cool. So he'll actually be, he'll have a canon character. Uh, and just, there's all kinds of, like, there's a, a lady who um, does artwork, and she did a really awesome, like, artwork that you would see in a 40k novel or, or whatever of um of him as a space wolf and his armor and everything so anyway i just thought i i don't know why i completely forgot about that update so i just wanted to throw that on uh, probably the more probably the, the most important update that i could have uh talked about was that so again uh thank you to everyone that bid thank you to the gentleman in texas that won hopefully again you enjoy the model um and uh i look forward to like i said I'll probably as much as possible again depending upon work in real life but at the very least uh when possible i will try to make a kind of a yearly um auction in april um since that is uh when he lost the fight um so kind of, a, I won't make it necessarily directly connected to brand. Uh, I just had respect for his family and stuff. You know, I, I don't want to like um, continue. I, I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to like ride. You know, the, the sympathy of that. That is not at all the intention of this at all. Um, but 
in a way, like, uh, brand motivated me to uh, try to make a little more difference than I do in my everyday life. And hopefully his story has done the same for others. Um, to, you know, we get so caught up in our daily lives and, and forget um, that, you know, unfortunately there's so many people in this world and everybody thinks the world revolves around them pretty, for the most part. Um, when in fact it doesn't, you know, obviously we forget about the people next to us and, um, so yeah, it, at the very least it definitely, his story and his fight has, uh, motivated me to try to do better at making a more positive difference, uh, when I can. And if I can use the hobby in that endeavor, um, I think that is a good thing. Um, so like I said, I'll, uh, probably start to do some sort of a small auction nothing crazy but some kind of a, a small auction uh, yearly or at least as much yearly as I can depending upon work and if I have to push it a few months here and there I may have to but at the very least I would like to uh, hopefully achieve that all right so uh, on that somber note again I will say goodbye and uh, until next time